this man screwed me out of money. He got all these women, all these parties. I, I couldn't get any sleep, Your Honor. I would find bras everywhere, thongs everywhere. He's just lying now, Your Honor. It wasn't no thongs. Probably. If it's not one thong, it's another. My heart at this point is just shattered. Late at night, I had no other choice. I had an 80-year-old man take me home. Did he say he's going to pay for it? He said we will figure it out. Is there any proof of this? Plaintiff Andrew Carrier claims his former roommate is a deadbeat. He's suing him for $5,000 for unpaid rent. Defendant Corinne Cockrell claims the plaintiff's friends ate all his food and stole his belongings. He says he owes him nothing. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is case number 171 on the docket, Carrier versus Cockroll. Okay. And welcome to you guys. <laughs> All right. You are suing your former friend and roommate, Mr. Cockrell, for $5,000 for 10 months of unpaid rent. Yes, sir. Tell me your side of the story. We've been friends for a good while. Yeah. And years. I'm suing... For years. I'm yeah. suing him because we made an agreement to uh, pay a lease for January to December 20 of 18. So a year lease. Yes, sir. And you made an agreement to what? We made an agreement to split the payments of $1,000 of rent each month. So we both had to pay $500 each. Got it. He only paid the first two months, Your Honor. Basically, sir, this man screwed me out of money. And this fool even tried to sleep with my girlfriend, man. Judge, Your Honor. Yes. Can I elaborate on that a little yes. bit? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Your Honor. So his girl used to come over from time to time. We would all be chilling in the living room, just watching TV and just conversating amongst each other. Now, I don't know where he get the idea that I would sleep with his girlfriend when I have my own girlfriend. If anything, he was cheating on his own girlfriend, all the women he had over at the house when she wasn't there. Women? Your Honor, me and this girl was in a relationship for a long time. I worked every single day, Your Honor. I couldn't even pay my second tuition of college because I had to pick up his slack and pay the rent. So I even got my car repossessed, sir. I couldn't go to church on Sunday. That's your fault. I couldn't fault. go to church. And this person signed an agreement with me, sir, on paper. Did you sign the lease? I signed the lease, Your okay. Honor. Okay, do, do we have a copy exactly. of the lease? Yes, sir. I have it right here for that. you. You signed there the you lease. Go. Okay. There you are, Judge. Okay, you're both on the lease. $1,000 a month rent, and you both signed it. Yeah, he signed the lease, sir. And you guys agreed that you'd split it? Yes, sir. And you're saying he paid for the first two months? First two months. If yeah. you didn't have an obligation to pay, then why did you pay the first two months? Your Honor, before we made the agreement and I signed anything, he knew that I was financially unstable and I told him I'd be able to put in what I can and he was perfectly fine with that at first, Your Honor. Did he tell you that he... No, he didn't, Your Honor. When we first lived together, he had a job and then he got fired from the job and then he got another job but then a week would pass by, I come home every day, and I see him sitting, you know, playing the Xbox or something. I ask him, hey, like, what happened to that job? He was like, oh, man, you know, they didn't hire me because I was black. And I'm like, I'm black. How you ain't got a job? Your Honor, I felt totally disrespected the whole time we were there at first. I didn't even feel like a roommate. I felt I come home, Your Honor, he'd be throwing parties. I don't know who he think he is. He's not P. Diddy. He's not Hugh Hefner. He's not... Tom Burgundy, he got all these women, all these parties. I, I couldn't get any sleep, Your Honor. I couldn't, I was, I felt disrespected. I come home, he playing my game with his friends. I don't know Objection, his friends. Your Honor. I have the job, I'm going to work every day, but I'm the one having the parties and he can't sleep. <laughs> your, your Honor, I come, I come home, Your Honor. Him and his friends, him and different females, they in the refrigerator, they not putting it on His no... females are in the refrigerator? His, he was feeding them, all of them, everybody. He was I had feeding a like job, a... what you expect? So you're saying there was no food for you? No, not at all, Your Honor. I didn't okay. feel, I felt like... You saying you were starving. I felt like a cellmate more than a roommate, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor. All right. I would clean up. He does. He didn't even clean up, Your Honor. I would clean up. I would find bras everywhere. Bras? Used condoms everywhere. Thongs everywhere. He's just lying now, Your Honor. In fairness, I'm not here as a dating counselor. Yeah, okay? like, what this they got to not... do with paying rent? It wasn't no thongs, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, thongs in it the wasn't closet. Even one. In, my, uh, in my room, oh, they stop. No, if it's not one thong, it's another. Okay. 
Your Honor, can I tell, like... Yes, you may. Okay. Basically, we've been knowing each other since we were freshmen in high school, Your Got Honor. Got it. And I lived in apartments all my life, Your Honor. I lived in roach-infested apartments. Like, I lived in the boonies. This man lived in a house all his life. And I would go to school... That's not and, my like, fault, though. Let me, I gotta no. talk, though. I would go to school, and, like, I would have a dollar, and i have chips. This man want the dollar, and he want the chips. <laughs> and I'm broke. You feel Got me? Like, yeah, okay. Are you... Here's the deal. And this is probably a good life lesson, in a sense. You signed the lease, okay? When you signed the lease, that's a legal document. So when you come to court, or when anyone comes to court, and they show me a legal document where two people sign it, then what is before the court is the legal responsibility of two people. Now, if there is a side agreement, like, oh, you don't really have to pay. Right. We've been friends through high school. Right. That has to be documented now. If there was no signed lease and just an agreement that you would chip in to pay the rent, okay, then it's a verbal kind of agreement, and that could be countered by a verbal agreement that I don't have to do it. But if one side of the argument is the lease and that is signed, and what you're bringing is just a conversation or a wink of the eye saying you don't really have to pay or when you have some money, give me some money. Unless you've got some document which says specifically that you don't have to pay the rent, then all I have before me in terms of evidence is a signed lease by both of you. Yeah. Where is your signed or text message some evidence other than just, oh, you said I don't have to pay. In the middle of the process of us living together, things were coming up missing. My TV came up missing. My I, game came up missing. Everything I, that I was you know, that's separate to me sir. came up missing. So how am I supposed to pay him and then pay for the Objection, stuff that's... Objection, Your Honor. You said that he would, he would have to have evidence of an agreement showing that a part of our lease that wasn't paid I wouldn't, he wouldn't have to pay it anymore. He didn't sign anything like that, Your Honor. All right, I'm not saying those things did or did not happen. You could file a separate suit on that. If you're saying that he took your stuff, which you'd have to be able to prove, mm -hmm. but if, if, if you have that, that's a separate legal action. He is suing you only for the rent. Right. Your portion of the rent. Right. For the 10 months you didn't pay. Your Honor, I don't feel like I owe him <laughs> anything. If anything, I feel like he owes me. I, I understand. So much came I, up missing, Your Objection. Honor. Objection. I, I understand. There's nights I went to work hungry, Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor. Can I... Okay, no. Okay. I understand that's what you feel. Right. But the court can't deal with your feelings. Yes, sir. You know, there has to be background music for that. It's got to be your yes, feelings. And according to the lease, you owe the rent. Finding for the Can plaintiff. Can I say something, Your Honor? <clears throat> Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> I think our friendship is tarnished. She's gonna have to grow up, and I think there's a maximum amount of uh, friendship left, but uh, I think he's already hit the max. If anything, he's the joke, and I don't feel like I owe him anything. The only thing lost here is a friendship to me. Plaintiff Dennis Hines says he was only trying to help a family friend, but wound up with a headache. He's suing for $3,399 for car repairs. Defendant Casey Amos claims her dream car turned into a nightmare because of the plaintiff's lies. She says she owes him nothing. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Case 51 on the docket, Hines versus Amos. Oh, great. The plaintiff, Mr. Hines, welcome. You are suing the defendant in the amount of $3,399 for car repairs, yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. And apparently you sold Ms. Amos a car. The car then, a couple of months later, broke down. You offered to pay for the repairs up front to help Ms. Amos out. Ms. Amos, you have not paid him back, and that's why you are suing her. Yes, sir. Why don't we hear from you first? Thank you, Your yes. Honor. Um, I'm a single mom. Yes. I work really hard to provide for my kids. Mr. Hines is a friend of my mother's. Yes. So Mr. Hines approached my mother 
um, telling her, you know, he's got a couple cars. Well, he had my dream car, the Explorer. I fell in love with it. We had and an This is a Ford Explorer? Yes. Okay. Um, what year do you? A 2004. Got it. Mr. Hines wanted to buy my car. I had a Dodge Stratus. So he bought my car, it was broke down and everything. So he bought my car and then in September. Well, in October, I made my first payment of $200. Oh, in other words, your car, you basically traded it traded, in so yes. you could have him. So what was the deal? You wanted to buy his car. Right. For how much money? Uh, $3,800. $3,800 for, for, for the Ford Explorer. Uh, okay. So. That happened in September. In October, I made a payment yes. of $200 toward the 38th. Um, so that was the deal in the original contract? Yes. Do we have a copy of the contract? Oh, okay, I'll take a look at that. So basically, the agreement or the contract was this, what is written down here. Right. Payments are $200 a month due at the end of each month starting in October. And the vehicle is sold as is on September 8th. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, in the as is, um, he told me that it had a, a used motor but very low mileage. There was a new radiator put in there. He yes. just had you know, the AC checked and he had ordered a headlight that he was going to replace. So in October. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, in November. I go to a comedy show in Birmingham. Yes. Well, it's late at night. I'm going, I'm trying, you know, I left and I'm going home to pick up my son. It's, yes. it's pouring down rain, it's dark. The Explorer runs hot. I pull over, I can't get it running. It's dark and pouring down rain. Um, I've got to get back to my kids so that I can get him. Yeah. In the rain, in the dark, I have to call an 80 year old man to come out to take me home. And you left the car there? I had no other choice. Because it's, it wasn't running? Okay. Right. When did you, when was the car picked the up? The next there? morning. He went and got it and took it to the mechanic. Okay. And I go to the mechanic after work and he tells me, you know, he took a look at the car and it was going to cost $5,000 to fix it because the radiator that was supposed to be new was not new. It had junkyard markings on it. Oh. Okay, so you had been told there was a new radiator, but it wasn't a new radiator. Exactly. Okay. And because of the radiator blowing, got water in the motor, causing the motor to, got it. to be destroyed. My heart at this point is just shattered. I'm a single okay. mom. I was trusting that this was a good vehicle. So I contact Dennis as soon as I find out. He tells me, okay, don't worry. I'm going to go get it, take it to my mechanic, and we're going to figure this out. He tells me that he's going to help fix my dream car. Pay for the repairs. Right. Is there a contract on this? No, just verbal. I thought he felt guilty. You know, he was trying to help. So he's trying to... Did he say he's going to pay for it or that he'll give you time to pay for it or you could pay him back? He said, we will handle this. We will figure it out. Who has the car now? It's He does. Okay. He went and picked Who it up. Who has the title to the car? He does. I signed it back over to him. Oh, so you, you wanted hands off? You um, well, he told me, you know, I could pay for the car and the motor. And I told him I don't feel responsible for the motor when it blew up because the radiator, which was supposed to be new. Okay, now what do you have to say? She sent me a text right here stating that she can make payments on the motor, but she can't pay for both. Okay. That's also the car was sold as is. If you say there's a new radiator, now you're going to buy the car as is, she is assuming, she has every right to believe that she's buying the car as is with a new radiator. If you didn't tell her that, I if did you not. didn't promise, so you didn't yes, tell her there's a new radiator. No, sir. The only problem that we had with the vehicle when she took possession of it was the AC would not work and the headlight. And you said you'd take care of I that? I took the AC. But you never that, told her there's a new radiator? No, sir. He um, told you it has a new radiator. Yes. Is there any proof of this? Just, it's, it was just verbal on that. You did say to him, thank you for letting me know I can do payments on the motor, but I can't do payments for both. Go ahead, anything else you want to say? She just know that, you know, she was going to pay for the motor. She agreed that she would pay for the motor. I've got Ted showing that she was going to pay for the motor. But when I said I'd pay for the motor, I told him I can do one or the other. I couldn't do both. I wanted my dream car. We had our second agreement that the money that she was going to pay me, the $200 per month, 
would go toward fixing the engine until that payment was paid off. And then when she got her tax money, she was going to finish the payment okay. on the engine. Your Honor, that's where I'm torn is. I was sold a dream car of lies. Like, that was my dream car. Okay. And that's why I really and honestly do not feel responsible for damages that could have been prevented if... Okay, but I don't have any... I understand what you're feeling, but I... Could these I, damages have been prevented if when it started running hot, you have to pull it off of the road at that point? But well, I did no, pull it, off. What are you showing me? She, not, in not taking care of the vehicle, there was red mud all in the seat, the back floorboard, the front floorboard, on the overhead up top, and mud in the back. This mud won't come out. It red mud stains. Yeah. So I'm even paid to have this. And Your Honor, the only reason All there's right. red mud in there is because it broke down on the side of the road in the pouring down rain. Okay. I had to get my stuff out of there. I was trying to figure okay. out how to get it running. Right. This case is not going to be decided on whether she kept the, the car clean. You both know that you're going in with a really old car here. Yes. And when you're buying an old car, in fact, sometimes when you buy a new car, but certainly when you buy a car, and this is 2004, so we're talking 15-year-old car, you know there are going to be problems, and the problem can happen any particular day. And if the car is now yours, you went and purchased the car. You know, the title doesn't become yours until you've finally paid it right. off, but it's your car, and the car could break down. And in the years that you have the car, it could happen the next day. It could happen three, four years from now. If the car breaks down, this wasn't a crash. It just stopped. This is normally your responsibility. But I don't have a written contract. If you can give me something where she agreed to pay you $200 to fix it. It so was never written and signed. It was through a text. You got the text up there. Right, right. I see it right here. Will. I see it right here. It says on there that she will, she's agreed to pay the $200 until her taxes come in. At that point in time, she'll finish paying. Okay, so let me see the receipt for exactly getting the car fixed. You bought a car, and just within the contract, it's as is. The bit about whether or not it's a new radiator or not, I've just got two different stories and no proof of that. The only thing I have before me is the suit for him to be paid back for the money he put forward on getting the car fixed. And he's entitled to be paid back for that. Having said all that, the best decision I can come up with is I find for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,299. Nice to look. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom. You have more clips to watch. Don't forget to subscribe.